and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross wherefore God also had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus.
Christ the King, we give our lives an offering, amen? amen. To all the earth resounds in ceaseless praise to the sun. You know, it's exciting times we're living in right now. It's dark times, but it's also times of the glorious light of God shining in the darkness, amen? amen. Praise the Lord. Hey, this, this song right here is a prayer, y'all. It's a prayer. Sing it as a prayer. It's my prayer right now.
Amen. It's a prayer, y'all. <laughs> Amen. I like that, Jason. I don't want to run this race in vain. That's what Paul said. I don't want to run this race in vain. I don't want to. I don't want to get to the end and be disqualified. Do you want to get? You know how they do. They they get those people that that, that don't do it right. They 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 dope. They do stuff to try to win, and they don't do it right. And they get disqualified. But you know what? We're, we're those who do it right and follow the commandments, obey Jesus, and make it in. Amen? All right. God is good. Hallelujah. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain. I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name Into the night Then through the darkness Your loving kindness Tore through the shadows Of my the work is finished, the end is written, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could Spoken, I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me His own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my
beautiful thing to celebrate the goodness of God for what he's done. When that morning came that sealed the promise, his buried body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared, the grave has no claim on me. You are resurrected. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. He forever reigns. And because we live in him, we will reign with him forever. Amen. Wow. Hallelujah. We're just going to continue in worship. I just want you to be ready to receive from God. The Holy Spirit's here. He wants to speak to each one of you. He wants to touch you right where you are. He doesn't want you to leave here the same way you came in Jesus' name. He wants you to be changed. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's enter in now. We worship you, Jesus.
give him glory. Give him praise. Don't be silent right now. <laughs> give him the glory to his name. He is the name above every name. We read that scripture this morning that every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that this Jesus Christ is Lord to things in heaven and in the earth and under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that he is Lord to the glory of God, the Father. Blessed be your name, worthy is your name, Lord. You have the name above every name, the name above all be saved. Yours is the name above every name and the only name that saves. Jesus Christ, King of Kings, Mighty Conqueror, Lord of all. Praise you, Jesus. We invite your presence, Lord, to have your way in this place today. Lord, have your way in our hearts today, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for each soul that's in this house and those that are watching. We pray that you touch them in a special way today, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing around the world, Lord, in the colleges, Lord. We pray that it would just spread, that your revival fires would just burn, burn out all the impurities out of your church, Lord. Make us holy. Make us holy, God, fit for your glorious presence, Jesus. We don't want to just sing songs. We want to live in your presence. Yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Well, you can be seated if you can. If you can. It's hard. Amen. If you can, after that, if you can be seated, be seated. But if you need to stand, stand. Give God the praise. Amen. You know what? You may have come here this morning all bound up and whatever's going on in your life. But the word says, if the son has set you free, then you are free indeed. Amen. Amen. And I'm a free man this morning. I'm very free. Thank you, Father, for making me free. Oh, God. Good morning, Grace Community Church. I know y'all got to be fired up this morning. Praise and worship. Y'all, y'all, y'all do such an awesome job. Amen. God is so good. He's blessing this big church. I know y'all walk up here and roll by. Y'all see this little building. Y'all think it's a small church. This is a dynamic church. This is a big church. God is doing great things right here at Grace Community Church with all of you. 
Come and be a part of what God is doing here. He's doing great things here, you know. And to our guests that's joining us online, we thank you so much for joining us this morning. We wish you could come and be here with us. Amen. We're having an awesome time. We have, we have a lot of things coming up. We have some announcements for you guys this morning. We have our bottles for life. And we have a few of them left out there. I think there's about maybe 12 of them out there, guys. This is a great ministry. Uh, sign out a bottle, fill it up with some money, some dollar bills, some coins, and turn it in. Today actually is the last day, but that's okay. Run to the bank, get what you need, come on back, <laughs> you know. Come on back, and we'll take those bottles, and we'll, you know, send them out and do what we need to do with them. But that's a great ministry. And what those are used for is to give to this ministry to where, you know, to, to do ultrasounds for women who are pregnant because some of them are contemplating having an abortion. But once they see the ultrasound and see the, see the, the, the little ultrasound, they change their minds, you know. So, so that's a great ministry, amen? Come and be a part of that. Give to that. That's a great thing to give to. And our next, we have coming up here, on March the 23rd and 24th is our EMC that we're hosting the, uh, the conference, the journey conference for the EMC. So you guys come in and be a part of that. It's a great honor that they are asking us to host this event. And immediately after service today, we're going to have um, a meeting concerning that, that coming up and we have lunch, light lunch, so we're, we, we like to do what? We like to feed people, and we like to eat. You can tell we're a church that we love to eat. Amen. Amen. And then we have our active shooter training that's coming up March the 1st and March the 8th at 7 p.m. So come and be a part of that training. Mr. Gordon uh, Neighbors, who is a graduate of the FBI Academy, and he's retired from the Shelby County Sheriff's Department. He's going to be leading up that training. So come on and be a part of that. That's exciting. And again, y'all see that we love to eat. First Saturday of every month is men's breakfast. We always have an awesome time of fellowship, food, and fun. Men always talk and, you know, share men talk, share things. So come on out and be a part of that. That's uh, March the 4th at 8.30 a.m. And Mike always do an excellent job of cooking. Amen. Amen. All right. And then, y'all, the first Monday of every month, this is a new ministry called our Fire Starters. And this is going to be our second one that's led by Pastor Ben and Pastor Roosevelt. So come on and be a part of that and share some ideas that you have. We have a time of prayer, uh, some, some praise and worship. We love praising our God, amen, giving him praise. And, and you may have some questions that you may want to ask. So come on and be a part of that. Again, we have a lot of things going on here at Grace, you know, so you can come and, and just find your place, you know, just find your place on where to serve and what to do. You have some questions. This is a great place to come and ask those questions. Amen. Amen. And on Wednesday nights, again, it is another opportunity that we love to eat. <laughs> Family meals. So from, from six to seven. We're eating and fellowshipping and having an awesome time with each other. And, you know, and that's the time to get to know people that you really don't know, to sit at the table with them and eat and hear things. And we share, you know, some stuff. And, you know, and then you find out, hey, I know that girl can cook like that, you know, and, or this guy can cook like that. But, you know, again, we just love to eat. And then from 7 to 8, we have a, a time of, of learning of God's word and then a time of prayer. So if you have a time of you have some needs, then it's an awesome time to come and to pray with us. Amen. 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 And so now it's time that we've been waiting for is the word of God. From our pastor, Dr. Amen. Ben Wilkins. Amen. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Amen. Y'all, uh, let's, let's pray first of all. Dear great God. Oh, Father, thank you for being in this place. Amen. Lord, thank you for manifesting your presence because, Lord, we came to see you. Yes. 
Lord, to experience you, to hear from you. Dear great God, please guide me and and Lord, don't let me get in the way of anything you might want to speak to somebody's heart today through your Holy Spirit. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Y'all, Major League Baseball starting up again soon. In order to make it onto a a major league team, y'all, it's an incredibly competitive thing. You know, here in the United States, kids start before they're teenagers to start training. They recognize, uh, you know, guys with, with gifting to, to be able to, you know, they're, they're just better than everybody else. And they start training them real early and they start scouting them out and everything. And then add to that all the ones from around the world now. They're trying to get to be a major league baseball player. It's, little league is all over the world. Well, I don't know about all over the world, but it's in many, many different countries now. And so they're all trying to make it to the major leagues. And it's incredibly competitive, you know, of that competition to try to make that. You know, and just counting from the United States alone, just the United States, according to one uh, real prominent sports website, did you know that there's a less than one one thousandth of a percent to make it to a major league. And in other words, you got a better chance statistically to be struck by lightning than <laughs> to make it to the major leagues. You really do. To get to, get to be one of those teams. And, you know, the competition is fierce. You know, and, and uh, you, know, you know, they don't like losing. You know, when you, get, when you get those kind of people and they all get together and, you know, you make it to a Major League Baseball team or other teams, I mean, these people don't like to lose. And, and that's just part of who we are as Americans. We do not like losing. Right, you know, but here's the thing. Jesus calls us to lose our life. Yeah. Jesus laid down his life and lost his life so that he could bring all of us us into his family, his eternal family, and to bring us into eternal life. (laughs) So Jesus defeated death by rising up out of death. And so he's calling us to follow him to lose our lives. And just as it resulted in eternal blessings for all of us, if we lose our life, that's when we find it. And, And Jesus flipped the script on death. He brought victory out of death. And so we're in our series called When Losing is Winning. Yeah. And these are, these are this is coming next, go to the next one, are, are the topics that we're going to be studying in the next few weeks. And all of these, we're going to see how losing is actually winning. Yeah. So today, let's look together in Mark 8. 34 through 38, and we're going we're gonna to talk about losing our life so that we can find our life. Yes. Y'all, we haven't, you haven't found life until you found life in Jesus Christ. You don't know what you're missing if you haven't experienced His resurrected life in your life. It, it's, it's just, words can't put it into, into uh, expression. But look, in Mark 8, 34 through 38, it says, Then, calling the crowd to join his disciples, he said, If any of you wants to be my follower, he must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake and for the sake of the good news, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my message in these adulterous and sinful days, the Son of Man will be ashamed of that person when he returns in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. So number one, Jesus calls us out of the crowd. You know, there's, a, there's always a crowd you know, that, that follow Jesus. I mean, he's, he's going to draw a crowd. That's just who he is. He's the greatest person who ever lived and walked on this planet. And people are going to be drawn to him. 
And look, he says in verse 34, it says, Then calling the crowd to join his disciples. You know, so he's calling the crowd to come and follow him as a disciple. You know, a disciple is a lifelong learner of his lifestyle. Mm. Taking his lifestyle and, and making it our lifestyle. And that's a lifelong process. Have you, have you noticed that Jesus, when he sent out his disciples, he didn't send people out to make believers. Mm. Though he wants that. Now, that's, you got to believe in him. But he sent, he said, go out and make disciples. Amen. See, people who are learning of his life and his lifestyle and learning about the Jesus life. Yeah. But it's a, it's a lifelong thing. And, and see, he says, not everybody who's, who says to me, Lord, Lord, is going to go to heaven. You know, the, so these, these people show up and Jesus, like I said, he always draws a crowd. But Jesus told them in place, he said, look, you're just, you're just here because I fed you. You know, you're, you're just here because you want me to do something for you. Most of you, that's, that's what you are. That's what he said. So what, you know, people have needs and they bring them to God. And they, they come to Jesus to fill their needs. And that's great. God wants to meet your needs, y'all. But that's not being a disciple. That's asking him to meet your need. Look at something Jesus said in Matthew 7, 13 through 14. He says, you can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad and its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. But the gateway to, heaven, the gateway to life is very narrow and the road is difficult and only a few find it. Now look at this from Wikipedia. Now, Wikipedia is not a, necessarily a Christian-friendly type thing. But they, they for, if you look up the major religions of the world, this is what they say right now. He's, they say that there are about 2.4 billion people on this planet who claim to be Christians. Amen. And that, that's great. You know, that's wonderful. But y'all, Jesus said there's going to be a few. Ooh, right. I don't know that Jesus would have said a few if there are really 2.4 billion of them following. That's just the ones right now. Y'all, the crowd is not necessarily a born-again believer in Jesus Christ. Praise God, He wants you to be. He, he wants us to be. But y'all, for, for 2,000 years, He has... I mean, He's done everything that He said He would. He delivers on needs. But, but what do you think is going on with that? I know this, if you have the assurance that you have been born into God's family, let that humble us, yes. let that be a, be a thing of thanksgiving, let us be extremely grateful that we are one of those few, and we know that, and we have that assurance inside of us. See, God wants everybody to be. But he's not pushing anybody away. But, but most people are part of that crowd and have not come out of that crowd to being a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Y'all, yes, he wants to fix stuff and he wants to meet needs. But he wants a whole lot more than that for you. Yes. Now, number two, Jesus wants us to trust him. Y'all, and this is really what it boils down to. He says, if you try to hang on to your life, you'll lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake and for the sake of the good news, you'll, you'll save it. Amen. See, Jesus is saying if, if we try to hang on to the control of our life, if we are the one in charge, he said, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Y'all, the Lord is the one in charge. Amen. We don't, we don't, we're not in charge of our lives. When we come to be a follower of Jesus Christ, we give up that. We give up the right to rule and control our own life. See, if you're still calling the shots and asking Him to join you in what you want, you may be part of that crowd that hadn't been born into the family of God. You know, God only knows. But look, He says, for my sake... In other words, you, you put him first in your life and you love him more than anything else. He's worthy of that. He is, he is. And look, for the sake of the good news. See, once we have been 
touched, once we have been born into the family, then you can't help but want somebody else to want what you got. If you got it. Now, how can, how, can you, how can you not? And see, as we all work together as the people of Grace Community Church in this place, and we do that and we do it together, y'all, we, we find that life that he's talking about where we're losing our goals and ambitions of life. And it doesn't mean all that's bad, y'all. But he's first. He said, seek him first. His kingdom first. And all that other stuff's going to be added to you. But we usually get it backwards. We'll try to work Him in if we have time. But when it really comes down to trusting Him. Y'all see? Because to lose our life. See, we're, we're afraid of what we don't know. We're afraid of what it'll cost us. We're afraid of what we might have to give up. We're afraid of maybe losing some family and some friends. We're afraid that we won't enjoy life as much as we do right now. And I want to tell you something, that's a lie. You ain't never had a happy life until you find life in Jesus Christ. Y'all, you have, we have a covenant-keeping God. He makes this promise to you. He is the God on His throne of the universe. Y'all, He keeps His covenant. He's the one started this whole thing. We didn't start it. He, he initiated it. We didn't. But, but look at this, y'all. See, if we're so afraid that we'll lose of what we'll lose, it blinds us to what we could have. Yeah. You'll never see it if you're hanging on to this world. Amen. Loosen up and let go. Yeah. Look what he said in John 16, 7. This is an amazing promise right here. Y'all, he's saying, but in fact, it is best for you. He's telling his disciples toward the very end of his life. He says, look, I'm leaving and they're, they're bewildered. I mean, they've never been around anybody like this before who was walking incarnate love. Amen. The Bible says God is love. He, he walked that and lived that in this world. And they'd never been around anybody like that. And the miracles and things that he could, there was nothing he couldn't do. And he's sitting there telling them, look, I'm about to leave. And they didn't want to believe that he was going to die on a cross they couldn't wrap their minds around the idea that he could die and still be alive and all that. But look what he's telling them. He's telling them about the promise of the Holy Spirit who's going to come and take up residence in their life. Amen. He says, but in fact, it is best for you that I go away. Because if I don't, the advocate, speaking of the Holy Spirit, is just another one of the names for him. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. And can you imagine anything better than having Jesus right with you here and you're hanging around with you, living life with you? And look, he says, this is better. This is going to be better because God's going to be living in you. Emmanuel, God with us. This is why he came. And that's what you got. You have it right now. You have it. You got it already. We're waiting on God. God's waiting on us to start believing Him. But we got to let go of the control of our lives. We got to lose our lives. Look at what, look at what Hebrews 13.5 says. Keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have. For He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He's saying, don't love God. You don't love money. You got God inside of you. And don't be love. Don't, don't love junk. You got God. He's in you. In him, you have everything that he is. All the attributes of God. He's in you. And there ain't nothing that he can't do. Y'all, and he loved you enough to die on a cross for you. But you can't have all that Without losing your life. Amen. You can't. Look, look at this. This is glorious right here. 1 Timothy 1, 13 and 14. He says, this is the Apostle Paul. He says, though formerly I was a blasphemer. I was a persecutor. Y'all, are you a blasphemer? Are you a persecutor like Paul was? 
Now, Paul was a guy who went and rounded up people to have them arrested, to have them executed, Man. killed for following Jesus Christ. That's what Paul did. And now he's the chief spokesman for Christianity for the last 2,000 years. Boy, I, I know none of you that bad. I, was, I wasn't even that bad. Uh, look, he said, I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. So Paul said he didn't understand what he was doing. He's kind of letting himself off the guilt trip. He says, I acted ignorantly in unbelief. You know why? Because Jesus paid for it. God doesn't want you beating yourself up, living in shame and regret and disgrace because of something you did. So, I mean, oh, just give yourself a break. You didn't really know what you're doing. Look what Jesus prayed as they were nailing him to the cross, blaspheming him, doing every terrible thing they could do. In Luke 23, 34, Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Y'all, for all that stuff that you've done, you didn't really understand what you were doing. Just believe the gospel. Believe Jesus Christ. Paid for it. Believe him. And leave it behind. That's part of losing your life. This world lives with shame and, and they never let you forget any sin you've ever done. Christ lays all that stuff, buries it in the bottom of the sea. Look, look going on. See, you might be saying, but, but, but look at this in verse 14. But for the grace of our Lord overflowed from me. Look, with the faith and love that are in Jesus Christ. So he's saying that when, when the new life came, God overflowed faith and love. And you might be saying that, you know, that was for an apostle. I'm not an apostle. I don't have that kind of faith. You know, that, that's for him and that's for them and all that. And, and you know, I'm, ju I'm just not there. Well, just read on down for, for a little bit. You might be thinking, you know, I'm just trying to make it from one day to the next. And that might be the problem that we're struggling when, when he's already won a victory for us. Look, just skip down a couple of verses. He says in verses 16 and 17, he says, For I receive mercy for this reason that in me, as the foremost, as the worst guy around, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience. Look. As an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. So Paul is saying, God put me on display for the whole world to see his grace and his glory. As a trophy of what he can do and how he can change a life. A trophy of his grace. Now look at, but he says, as an example. That means it's for all of us. See, God wanted us to see and understand that if he can do it for him, he can on, do man. it for us. On, now you got, you got it waiting on you. On, on. But look at, look at the next, look at the rest of that verse in verse 17. After all this, he called, to, called him to break out in some praise. Look, he said, to the king of the ages, Woo! immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Yeah. That's a time to put some... Praise up in this house, man. Y'all forgot. He, that just caused him to break out in that. Yes. When you've experienced that, yes. when you've had that. Oh, man. Number three, yeah. Jesus wants us to guard our souls. He says, and, and what benefit do you gain? What benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? He says, anything worth your soul? Jesus is saying, no matter what you could have in this life, it, 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 it wouldn't benefit you if it cost you your soul. Soul can be used in, in the different ways in the Bible. And here it means that inner part of you that's the real you. 
You know, the real you is not the body that we all recognize when we look at you. The real you is the soul living inside the body. And that's the eternal soul that God gave you. And, it's gonna, and your eternal soul is going to live somewhere after you leave this earth. See, this body is temporary. The soul is eternal. The death is the separation of the soul from the body. That's all, that's all death is. If you know Jesus Christ, the Bible teaches you'll, you'll leave this and you're already joined with the Spirit of God. You just, you just leave this body. You're still in the presence of God. That's what the Bible teaches. And you're, you're still, you're, you're more alive than you ever were before. But look, everybody on this planet is living, is an eternal soul, and they'll live forever in either heaven or hell. Everybody will. You know what, you know what baffles me? Uh, I mean, that's the most important thing you could ever settle in your life. And nobody wants to talk about it. Everybody is going to live somewhere after this life. And you can't get anybody to talk about it. People don't even want to face that, that that's true. And everybody knows, even every civilization, every religion and everything, all that, all that stuff, they all recognize there's something after this life. But nobody wants to talk about it. Don't want to face it. But y'all, Jesus wasn't afraid to deal with hard subjects. No, y'all, you're, you're only going to live at best 100 years in this body. And then you're going to live 100 billion years, so to speak. Yes. Mo more, actually. Forever and ever and ever and ever. Yes. Yes. After this life. Yes. Yes. Long life. Long life. But where do we put our emphasis? On the right now. Come on now. It's crazy. Who's behind all that? The father of lies. See, we want so little when he wants so much for us. Look at this in Acts 3, 6 through 8. See, we are, we are needy people. And there was this guy who had been paralyzed all his life. Just laying there. Paralyzed. And he used to hang around hoping that people would give him something. And so let's pick up the story. And so Peter and John are passing by on the way to the temple to pray. <clears throat> he knew when to be out there. And he knew that good people, praying people, probably going to help him more likely than the other people. So he hung out around the, around the temple. He says, but Peter, he, so he asked, he asked for them, can you, can, you spare, can you give me some spare change or something like that? And Peter said, look, I, I have no silver and gold. But what I do have, I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. And leaping up, he stood and began to walk and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. Amen. Y'all, the, the beggar wanted a little temporary help. He was asking for just enough for his next meal. See, if he'd have gotten that, he would, have, he would have him enough for a meal. If somebody would have given him a lot of money, maybe he could, he could live and eat off of that for a year. But being able to walk, see, he, now he, can, he could feed his family for the rest of their life. But there's something better than that. See, this introduced him to the eternal God. Who, who saved his soul, and now he's fit for all of eternity. And those in his household, if they all believe. See, we want, we want little bit when God wants to do a lot. Look at, what, look at what was paid for your soul. Don't make a stupid trade for your soul, Jesus is trying to tell us. He's saying, what would somebody give for their own soul? You know, that, that's stupid. See, and look, <clears throat> y'all, the devil, he's not going to come to you and say, 
Hey, you want me to wreck your life? No, he's going he's to put a picture on your phone. That's what he's going to do. He's going to give you a picture on your phone. And then he's going to tell you, what's, what's it going to hurt? Just look. So you look at those pictures long enough, and you don't want to go to church because you'll feel guilty. Now, if you're struggling with that and trying to fight it, you know, that's, that's one thing. But it can make you get to the place where you don't even want to, you don't even want to win it. But you keep looking at those. You start looking for ways to act out that stuff. And then you go find you somebody else other than that sweet, precious wife God's given you. And you stay on that and then you ruin your family. And stay on that and get, let it get so deep that you don't even care anymore. And the devil's got you. He's got your soul. Hey, it's real. And that's just one thing he can get us on. Number four. Jesus wants us to identify with him. Y'all, don't, don't give up your soul for nothing. Don't give it up for anything. But especially for nothing. Jesus wants us to identify with him. Look in Mark 8, 38. He says, if anyone is ashamed of me and my message in these adulterous and sinful days, the Son of Man will be ashamed of that person when he returns in the glory of his Father and the holy angels. Tell me this. Why, why would we not want to identify with the greatest, most influential, best person who's ever lived on this planet? Why, why do we not want to identify? Why do we not want to go public with his name and the fact that we follow him? Why are we embarrassed? Why are we letting them tell us what to think about Jesus? Why are we doing that? Why do we all cave in from, at, at times? You know, when it comes time to stand up for Jesus Christ? Amen. Why? See, he wants us to identify with him. If we really is. He says, if anyone is ashamed of me and my message, and in these adulterous and sinful days, the Son of Man will be ashamed of that person when he returns. Y'all, he's saying we can't spend our lives like that. Not what he's done for us. I'll close with uh, 1 John 2, 1. See, He's standing up for you right now. He's standing for you. He wants you to stand for Him. Look, He says, My little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Yes. See, God's holiness demands that sin be punished but when we sin as a believer in Jesus Christ and as we stand before God, when he does appear at the end of the earth and the end of time and all of that, see, Jesus is standing for us and saying, I paid for their sins. I know he's a knucklehead, but I paid for his sins. You know, he's, that's what he's saying. See, God's holiness demands justice. And punishment. But Jesus is standing for us. Ain't that glorious? Yes. Now he's pleading your case before God. Right now. He's saying, God, according to your covenant, Father, according to your covenant, his or her sin is paid in full. And y'all, it was all God's idea. I mean, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are God. And we can't understand that. We never will. So don't try. I mean, don't wrestle with that. But we have, y'all, if we don't have an advocate standing before us, before the holy, eternal God, y'all, if we don't have that advocate, we've got nothing. But we do have Him. 
Y'all, so I'm asking you, what about you? Have, you? have you come out of that crowd out there? Everybody's a believer. Everybody believes in Jesus. You can't find anybody hardly in America who's not a Christian, supposedly. You can't. That's the crowd. Have you come out of that crowd and become a disciple? For his sake and for the sake of the good news. That's what he said. You know, have you, have you done that? Are you, are you trying to do that? Oh, I mean, God loves, <laughs> you know, you're not going to find more love and grace. It's just a free gift. Sometimes our sin in us makes us feel like we're not worthy for that, of, of grace. We're not worthy of forgiveness. You know what? I mean, really? We're not. We're not. But that ain't got nothing to do with it. Don't, don't put it on you. Because if you put the focus on you, that's the wrong place to be looking. Put it on Him. That's who's making the offer. And it's unconditional. Yeah, he didn't say, I love everybody but this group, or I love everybody but this sinner over here. These sins are too bad, and, you know, these, you're, you're pretty good, so I'll take you all. He didn't say anything like that. We all fall short. But the grace of God piles up on top of us. It's like coming in like waves on us. It's available. You just got to take it and believe it. So I'm going to lead you in a prayer right now. Say, Father, please forgive me. God, I'm not making any excuses. I'm not trying to play games with you. God, I just, I just choose to believe I accept your free gift. God, I don't know what to do next or anything else. I just believe it. Uh, he's waiting. He's just waiting for you to believe that. That's all. You might say, God, well, that, that sounds too easy. That's all there is? Yes, that's all there is. Just take a free gift. Just take it. I mean, just grab, grab it and take it. He wants you to be greedy about it. Just take it, grab it, you know, run. About that, I mean, he wants you to just grab that gift, receive that forgiveness, live it, and never look back. Oh, God, if there's anybody here who's never really made that commitment to you, Father, I pray that today is the day right here, right now. And Lord, that they wouldn't be ashamed of you and would come and stand up here and say it. Lord, that they'd leave their seat and come right up front and, and say, I'm not ashamed of you. I'm not ashamed of Jesus. We're going to ask you to just, just come, come right on to the front. Coming to the front is not going to make you saved. But it'll nail it down in your heart that you really mean it. And it will tell others you really mean it. But the main reason, the main person that you want to make that commitment for is Jesus.